I love asking questions. I ask a ton of questions because that's why I learn a lot, of course. But there are times when we need not quantity, but quality questions. Why are you asking that question? What do you think you're gonna get? If you can come up with a good answer to that, I'll answer it. But if you can't, you get banned. Does that sound fair? You asked a keyboard question? Ugh. What's your keyboard? Wow, do you listen, bro? You get a timeout. And you can take your timeout and you can think about why that's a stupid question. And looking at it, I was just like, damn, these guys probably don't even realize what they are doing wrong. Maybe I have too much empathy in me, but that's why I wanted to take a look at it, at what questions to ask, how to ask them, when and where, and the whole thing. I was individually taught in last year of high school, so teachers were coming to my house and teaching me one-on-one. -on -one. And that was fantastic. It was probably one of the most efficient methods of studying I ever witnessed uh, because I could ask questions, a lot of questions. In a stationary class, I was shy and didn't want to take everyone's time because everyone's waiting for me because I don't understand something. But like this, one-on-one, -on -one, like I had to understand everything. I had to ask questions, right? There's nobody else to solve the task for me. I have to understand it. So I was just sitting there asking a ton of questions. It's something I read in a, in like a only Polish book, uh, which can translate to break your brain about efficient study methods. And this method with the questions uh, here was called the child method, because you, you ask a ton of questions, like a child, like a curious child that builds their knowledge piece by piece based on what they already know. It's kind of just satisfying your childish curiosity by putting the information into a bigger picture that makes sense and that is coherent. And that's pretty much how I live and I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, I was learning to drive a car recently and my teacher sits with me in the car and he's there only for me. There's nothing for him to do. I can just ask him a ton of questions. And I do, just a flurry of questions. Like, what happens if I slam the clutch pedal to the ground right now? Oh, nothing much. That's boring. And why did the engine make that sound just now? Oh, my gear is too low. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of known among my friends for asking these random questions. Like I was listening to podcasts with Destiny and Melena and they were talking about their open relationship. And I was just like, damn. So what newest opportunity when I was talking to my friend, I went, any thoughts on open relationships? And the best thing is that I ask even braver random questions and they don't even laugh at me at this point. They just actually honestly answer the question, which is fantastic. Like, usually people would hit the question and be like, oh, hold up. <laughs> but my friends are not normal. We make safe zones for speaking our mind that I wrote about in my newest blog post. What a reference. <laughs> anyway, ask questions, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I kind of live by this. I never had anybody to tell me how to live. I have to figure it out on my own. Now I'm doing my best. Okay, so asking questions is fantastic for learning, especially in times of AI, when you can just ask any question on and on endlessly about anything and you will get an answer, which is great. But there's another side to this, because asking questions like this is kind of a privilege, a privilege that you don't get with the smartest people in the world. Of course, it would help us if you could ask anyone anything and get a response. Unfortunately, they have more important things to do than helping us all the time. And that's something I learned while observing hackers. You guys know that I discovered hacker culture recently uh, and I was quite surprised to see how they seem arrogant and intolerant of not to bite questions. And you can take your time out and you can think about why that's a stupid question. But now I get it. If you find this attitude obnoxious, condescending or arrogant, check your assumptions. We're not asking you to genuflect to us. In fact, most of us would do nothing more than to deal with you as an equal and welcome you to our culture if you put in the effort required to make that possible. But it's simply not efficient for us to try to help people who are not willing to help themselves. So let's take a look on how to ask questions to the people that you respect that are unable to answer a ton of your questions. I recently watched a video from Kaizen Command on impressing someone who's higher status. 
And surprisingly, it's kind of related to what we talk about here. And impress the people you admire by standing out in an incredibly positive way, asking killer questions. Do you ever think about how much your narrative is shaped by the need to package the details of your life into these instantly accessible anecdotes? I, uh, a great question. You're like a really well-researched and like great interview. This is wild. So are you. Thanks. So are you. Even if the status is equal, whatever that thing even is, we still want to show respect to the other person. We want to ask them a great question that is interesting for us and for them. We don't treat the other person like a mind knowledge and just dig and dig and dig. We respect them. Imagine sitting on George Holt's stream and him going, wow, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, he will never say that, right? Because it's a great question. That's why I told you to imagine that. Anyway, you guys know that I admire hackers like George Hoss and I got interested in hackers culture in general and I made a whole video about it. But one time when George was reading a stupid question, uh, he, he was just so over it that he recommended a guide on asking questions the smart way. So I want to dig into that and generalize it a bit so it refers to all questions, not just technical ones. And let's see what's written there. Hackers have a reputation for meaning simple questions with what looks like hostility or arrogance. It sometimes looks like we're reflexively rude to newbies and the ignorant, but this isn't really true. What we are, unapologetically, is hostile to people who seem to be unwilling to think or to do their own homework before asking questions. People like this are time sinks. They take without giving back, and they waste time we could have spent on another question more interesting and another person more worthy of an answer. We call people like this losers. So pretty much hackers way to do it would be to optimize for learning of everyone, not just for getting to the answer. Like Feynman put it. What is it, the feeling between those two magnets? Feeling, of course you feel it. Now what do you want to know? What I want to know is what's going on with the metal. Magnets repel each other. And, well then what does that, but what does that mean? Or why are they doing that? Or how are they doing it? Perfectly reasonable question. Of course it's ask. a reason, it's an excellent question. But the problem that you're asking, you see, when you ask why something happened, how does a person answer why something happened? Now, when you explain a, a why, you have to be in some framework that you allow something to be true. Otherwise, you're perpetually asking why. And so you begin to get a very interesting understanding of the world and all its complications. I'm not answering your question, but I'm telling you how difficult a why question is. You have to know what it is that you're permitted to understand and allow to be understood and known and what it is you're not. But you're not at all disturbed by the fact that when you put your hand on the chair, it pushes you back, but that you can't put your hand through the chair when looked at more closely. Why? It involves these same repulsive forces that appear in magnets. But I really can't do a good job, any job, of explaining magnetic force in terms of something else that you're more familiar with, because I don't understand it in terms of anything else that you're more familiar with. When would you be satisfied with an answer? Why do magnets attract? because there is a magnetic force between them. Question answer. Good question. Did you learn something? I didn't. And you wasted your question. But I can give you a hint question. Why do magnets lose their properties after being heated up to a certain temperature? What is temperature? You don't ask, hey, how do I start with machine learning? Because that gets you nowhere. What are you optimizing for? For blindly following someone's instructions? I got interested in machine learning recently so I searched for some sources on how to start machine learning and now I know something, I can ask better questions. I discovered this guy called Andrew Ng. My name is Andrew Ng. Who co-founded Google Brain and Coursera. He's a great guy. But his courses seem to be a little bit better prepared than MIT Open Course on Machine Learning. But I'm a little bit confused on where to start, with his Coursera course or YouTube course. And what's the difference? Or maybe there are better sources. And now we're getting somewhere. I'm asking questions like someone who put at least minimal effort into researching the thing I'm asking about. That's how you ask questions here. You have to be alert, thoughtful, observant, and willing to be an active partner in developing a solution. If you're not willing to do that, we recommend paying for a consultant that will personally help you. The best way to get a rapid and responsive answer is to ask it like a person with smarts, confidence, and clues who just happens to need help on one particular problem. Okay, this video is getting like way too long, but I hope you get my point after the example with machine learning. Now we can speed on to the rest of the hacker's guide on asking questions. 
When you talk with someone you respect and has limited time to give you, ask good, quality questions. So, don't ask questions that are easily searchable. You should first try looking for the answer elsewhere. Be concise and informative, so it's easy to reply. Do you know these forum questions when the guy is like, please help, this program is crashing, and then people who want to help him have to dig for more information. Like, what does the error message say? What's the console printout? Is it replicable? What are the conditions? And so on. Again, make it easy to reply. Be concise and informative. Remember that volume is not precision. Don't pity yourself like you're asking for mercy. Don't say that you're a beginner, so sorry for a stupid question, because that's not informative. Also, I'm a foreigner. Sorry for my bad English. <laughs> Just do your best. Do your best. What is nice, though, is politeness. Everyone is friendly, but you have to go first. Thank the other person for their time and for the response. And last thing, if possible, be public about your question. Hackers believe in access to information, and we should also support it. Because someone might have the same problem as you, so it would be nice to share with others. Questions in private should be exceptions, where they involve some private matter and private information inexperienced future me here because I think I forgot to mention one thing that is kind of obvious but apparently it's not really don't go off topic there are times when you can ask any question and get a response because the person is not talking about anything specific at the moment but usually when someone is doing something it's distracting to go off topic that's why the keyboard questions are so annoying because first of all it doesn't matter and second of all it's just distracting like we're focused on something discussing a specific thing and then here was your keyboard, you're like, what's my keyboard, man? So just keep that in mind at the back of your head that not every time is a proper time to ask that question. Also, look what I found in the depths of the internet. A question like what programming language did you learn first? I don't, like, that's not a good question. And it's not a good question because it's a question that's like, it's totally meaningless. I think I've said a few times how I try not to talk about myself on these streams because my idiosyncratic life path doesn't have anything to do with skill. It doesn't have anything to do with anything that's real. It's the same thing with keyboards and terminals. And So what are examples of good questions? Uh, good questions are questions that lead to the discovery of truth. Um, what is truth? So truth is something that if two people uh, were to sit on their own, and research something, they would come to the same conclusion. Well, let's say N people, it doesn't have to be two, right? It's something that is objectively discoverable through the universe. Good questions are the ones that get you to the truth. Isn't that nice? If that's not nice, I don't know what is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, the whole hacker's guide on asking questions the smart way is linked in the description. And remember, that singularity is neither. With every day. I actually watched, again, a, a CGP Grey video. Uh, humans need not apply. And my god, it hit me again. It hit me again. Like, there will be no arts-based economy. There will actually be just no jobs for humans. Okay, but that's kind of off-topic in this video. <laughs> I guess nobody's perfect, not even me.